Hi guys, good morning. Today we have to talk about eclipse portals. If you followed me for a long time, you probably already know what they are, but for people that haven't, you might not be aware. And with two eclipses coming up in the next six weeks, the time has come to start talking about them. Okay, so we have two eclipses coming up. One is on April the 8th, and that's a total solar eclipse that's transiting across the mainland United States. And then we have another eclipse happening two weeks earlier than that. And that is a lunar eclipse that will be taking place on March 25th or March 24th, depending on, you know, it's like right at like midnight-ish. So, um, but for most of the US, it will be on the 25th at like one in the morning or something. I have the chart somewhere and we might look at it later um, in the same video. But I wanted to talk about the importance of eclipse portals so that as we head into this one, you know what you're getting into. The first thing that we have to understand is that eclipses are pretty common. They happen uh, multiple times a year, every single year. They don't always get as much press as this one on April 8th because a lot of times they aren't total eclipse and a lot of times they aren't visible from whatever section of the world that you're living in, right? Um, again, any one location can expect to see a total solar eclipse only once every 375 years. So most people live their whole lives never even having the possibility of exposure to a total solar eclipse that they can see. It's, um, I don't know, it is what it is, but we all experience eclipses all the time and we just don't know that they're going on. So eclipses always happen coinciding with full moons and new moons, okay? What's happening is, um, an e a lunar eclipse always takes place during a full moon because it's as far away. Uh, every time you have a full moon, the sun is as far away as it can possibly get from the moon. And that's what makes it a full moon is that the sun is absolutely as far away as it can be from the moon. And so it lights up the whole moon and that whole moon is reflecting back because the sun is all the way across from it. And then as the sun is moving, we're seeing a slimmer and slimmer um, amount of the moon until it's so close to the sun we can't see it at all because it's occupying the same slice of the pie of the sky as the sun is. And so the sun, therefore, it cannot reflect off of the sun. And so we don't see it. And that is the new moon. Okay. So we have the full moon, we have the new moon, and that, and they always happen exactly two weeks apart. That's why we have um, the, you know, the four week lunar cycle, 28 days. So you will always have a lunar eclipse on the night of a full moon. It's a full moon and a lunar eclipse at the same time. And what makes it a lunar eclipse is that the earth itself comes right between the sun and the moon when the earth lines up just so that it blocks out the sun's reflection off of the moon. It blocks the sun's light from reflecting off the moon. That's when we get a lunar eclipse. Um, when we get a solar eclipse, it's happening at the same time as a new moon. And it's when the, it's when the moon comes in between the earth and the sun and the moon blocks out the sun. So these are happening uh, between four and six times every single year um, because you always are going to have at least two, two eclipses every single year, two solar eclipses, and then you have matching lunar eclipses. And sometimes um, eclipses come in sets of three, just depending on the math and geometry of how all the, all the luminaries are moving. The luminaries are the sun and the moon, okay? Because they give light, right? Lumen, light, okay. So that is important to, to understand about full moons and new moons. Now, when you look at a chart of the night sky, um, looking at it from the perspective of the night sky as this giant cosmic clock that we're all living in. And if we come at it from what I would call an astrological perspective, which I'm a, a Christian and an astrologer, astro logos means the stars and the words, the words of the stars, viewing the stars from this symbolic perspective. The idea is that in the moment that you take your first breath, the, the chart of the night sky that is generated from that moment um, indicates a lot of things about you and how you live your life and the kinds of the ways that you view the world. And kind of some of the life experiences that you might have in your life. Um, but why am I talking about that? Because the sun is dealing with your total sense of self, um, your your like core personality. If you say, I'm an Aquarius, that means that you were born when the sun was in the sign of Aquarius. If you say, I'm a Taurus, it's because you were born during those 30 days that the sun was in the constellation of Taurus from our perspective, you know, it's not actually like 
rubbing elbows with the actual stars of Taurus, but from our perspective, it looks like the sun is is transiting through that area of the zodiac. And then we say, you're a Taurus, you're a Virgo, you're a Leo, or whatever we say. Um, but a star chart is so much more complicated than that, right? Like if you've ever read, you know, a, a stupid horoscope for your sun sign, you were like, this doesn't sound like me at all. It probably didn't because the sun is just one part of many, many parts of, of the chart. Like if you look at the night sky, um, it would be very foolish to say that the only thing that that is important in the night sky is the sun. Like there's a million stars out there and all of them are playing a, a role. We don't understand many of many of them and some play more of a role than others, but we are just as complicated as the total night sky. And that complication changes person to person. Like every, all of us took our own first breaths in different times, in different places, in different circumstances. And we see that complexity reflected in how complex all of us are and how we interact with each other. So um, the sun represents like the core personality. The moon is going to be your internal side. It's going to be your feelings. It's going to be the way that you emotionally approach the world and the lens through which you emotionally perceive the world. Um, a lot of times the sun and the moon are so default to us that um, we just kind of assume that everybody else thinks about the world and feels about the world the same way that we do, but that is not true. And when you understand your sun sign and your moon sign, a lot of times a star chart can start making a lot more sense person to person. But what happens on a personal level during an eclipse? Um, let's think about it. During a lunar eclipse, the sun is as far as it can get from the moon and the earth is right in the middle, blocking the light of the sun from the moon. During that time, there is on kind of a spiritual level, a severing that takes place. It's obviously temporary and um, it's like a spiritual thing, you know, um, but there's, it's kind of like our little guards go down like doo -doo, um, between your sense of self and your emotions. Okay. It's going to divide the sun and the moon in your own body, in your own spirit. That's what happens during a lunar eclipse. And then during a solar eclipse, when the moon comes between the earth and the sun, um, they uh, you, you have kind of the opposite thing where um, your feelings are disrupting the connection between yourself and your sense of self, okay? What happens is during this these two week window between a lunar eclipse and a solar eclipse that go together, um, it's a time of massive disruption. It is a time of enormous spiritual growth. When um, when this happens, it's kind of like everybody's energy field opens wide and we all have this opportunity for divine revelation and divine information to flow down upon us and start upgrading us or not. Because how we each react to this event is gonna be really particular to us and the energy that we bring to the event. I guarantee to you, if you took a look at the list of every eclipse that has happened during your lifetime and you took a look at all of the major events that took place in your lifetime, you would find weird coincidences about how they all line up with your calendar of eclipses. In my own life, well before I was aware of the spiritual significance of eclipses and, you know, the possibility of serious um, spiritual growth or or spiritual something during those times, um, I did notice that many of my big life events were happening coincident to eclipses. I was actually born on an eclipse. Um, so, so it is just funny how when you're aware of it, um, things can be a lot easier. Now, I say that you can have this opportunity for a lot of spiritual growth or not, and it depends on you. It's because what happens during an eclipse portal, that two-week window, we have one disruption on the one end and then and then the other disruption on the other end, but it kind of acts as like a tunnel that we pass through, like a birth canal. And as we do that, what happens is organically, different kind of weirdo situations will just magically pop up in your life and all of them are going to give you the chance to reevaluate your life to think new thoughts and feel new feelings to let go of old ways of thinking about things or not see the thing is it always comes back to your agency and how you choose to deal with these different events and so a lot of times most people don't know what's going on 
they they are just seeing that one thing after another is flying at them in their life. They feel overwhelmed and stressed and like they're going to just lose their mind. And rather than look within and say, okay, the situation is coming up and it's triggering me. What is in me that's not trusting God to take care of this? You know, what is in me that needs to change? What is in me that is not, um, you know, compatible with feelings of peace at this time? These are hard questions. When we look within and say, why can't I be happy with the situation that's happening? A lot of times the answers we get mean that we have to change and we don't want to do that. So we don't even ask the question and we just get through the eclipse portal um, feeling stressed and traumatized the whole time. And then we didn't necessarily learn anything. Um, but if you if you are approaching your life from a space of asking habitually, turning to our creator and saying, okay, what do I need to change? What's going wrong here? What, what do I need to look at and see within myself to heal something? That's when the magic happens. And that's when um, eclipse portals can kind of unlock us and help us just bust through a ton of, of stuff at the same, all, you know, all in two weeks. So eclipse, eclipses happen. How do I put this? During an eclipse portal, we have this amazing opportunity to have 18 months worth of spiritual growth condensed into just two weeks. This is because um, uh, eclipses happen because of the movement of the nodes, the North node and the South node. And the nodes take 18 months to transit into an into another sign or an, into another axis of signs. And so that's why they say it takes, that's why, that's why they say this. If you can be wise going into it, knowing that you have this massive opportunity for spiritual growth, uh, you can really use that time very wisely and uh, find yourself learning all sorts of lessons that you didn't know were there. So um, this is my invitation to you to become more conscious of it. This is an amazing time to start unpacking the stuff going on in our subconscious minds, the stuff that we do when we don't even want to do it and we're doing it anyway. This is an incredibly powerful period of time where we can start making progress on finding out why we're doing those things and stopping it and changing it. We can change ourselves and change our whole lives. So this is just something that I wanted to bring to your attention as we head into this eclipse season. Eclipse portals, it's a thing and we're heading into one. Be sure to like and subscribe. Come hang out on Facebook at Intuitive Healing with Ali Duzette. I want to make this eclipse season as easy and beautiful and smooth as possible for you. I want you to experience incredible spiritual growth and to feel amazing and connected to yourself and connected to our creator and connected to the people around you. I want you to have the best kind of life that you can have. So Come on back another day and we're going to keep unpacking this eclipse. Thank you guys for being here.